Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is true that Iran lives up to its commitments. It will gain access to roughly $56 billion of its own money, revenue frozen overseas by other countries. But the notion that this will be a game changer with all this money funneled into Iran's pernicious activities, misses the reality of Iran's current situation. Partly because of our sanctions, the Iranian government has over half a trillion dollars in urgent requirements, from funding pensions and salaries to paying for crumbling infrastructure. Iran's leaders have raised the expectations of their people that sank this revenue to go into spending that improves the economy and benefits the lives of the Iranian people. Well, you heard it, and of course you know it's all a lie. Obama means to build up Iran and to crush Israel. Welcome to the Savage Nation. There is only one intent from this Muslim in the White House. Oh, did I say that? I'm so sorry. I didn't clear it with George Stephanopoulos or ABC News. The Muslim in the White House, or the Muslim sympathizer in the White House, the sympathizer with Iran in the White House, Iran's man in the White House, however you wish to put it, is overriding all of Congress. Remember what I just said to you. The majority of both houses oppose this deal, but this petty dictator, this dictator in the White House is is forcing the deal through the same way he forced through so many of his other left-wing fanatical planks. So you say, what can I do about it? Nothing. You can throw your hands up and say, what can I do about it? That's all. Now, there's a story that's somewhat related, but not directly related. A dumb basketball dribbler by the name of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, whose real name is Lou Al-Sindar, who became a black Muslim at some point in his, in his evolution. This dumb basketball dribbler is suddenly an expert on the news. He became Einstein. After th- spending his whole life throwing balls around on a wooden floor and aiming for hoops, He is now a political scientist. He attacked Trump, and he called Trump an enemy of the Constitution, and he called Bernie Sanders uh, a wonderful shot man. Now, what's interesting here is that this Einstein fears an American nationalist like Trump, but supports a weakling anti-American socialist like Sanders, as you would expect. Do I need to say any more? Another topic I want to talk about is what does Trump's loyalty pledge really indicate? I'm a little skeptical. Just a teeny lip, a teeny skeptical. But if you're not interested in Trumpomania right now, I'm also going to talk about some research we did on who is going to profit from the Iran deal. Wait till you hear the names of the profiteers. That's right. Oh, on both sides of the aisle. Oh, there's some Republicans there for sure. Who will benefit from the Iran deal? You think that there's no money at stake? You're telling me there are no Republican so-called businessmen who have lined up to do do business with the Hitlers of Iran? Are you kidding me? Well, we'll talk about that. Talk about a lot of things. A fascist judge in Kentucky has jailed a Christian clerk because she refused to issue a a gay marriage license. Now, if you heard about the persecution of Christians in China, you wouldn't be surprised. You've heard about the Falun Gong and everyone, oh, how could they do that to Christians? We won't stand for it. We want human rights in China. Well, now as the worm turns, you find out that the entire movement is backed by fascism. A fascist judge in Ashland, Kentucky, has ordered to to prison a poor woman because she refused to issue a marriage license to gay couples. Can you believe you're living in this country? Can you believe what's happened in only a few short years? How we've gone from a shaky remnant of a republic to a fascist dictatorship under a thin man who pretends he loves the people? What else do I have for you? I don't know, awful lot of things. How about a joke since it's almost Labor Day weekend and nobody wants to hear about an Einstein who dribbles basketballs or clerks who are in prison because they believe in God and Christianity? No, you don't want to hear about that. It's it's almost the weekend. 
So how about this? A little joke someone sent me. You see, Hillary Clinton went to a primary school in New York, so the joke goes, to talk about the world. And after her talk, she offered question time, something she hasn't done yet uh, for any of her, uh, let us say, competitors, because there are none. In a fascist dictatorship, there are no competitors. In a one-party dictatorship, there are no competitors. In the, in the fascist dictatorship of the Democrat Party, the model being that of California, there is no alternative. There's only the single-party leader, and then there are acolytes who salute and say amen. So she goes to an elementary school to talk about the world, not to television nor a debate. And one little boy puts up his hand. Hillary asks him what his name is, and he says, Kenneth. And what is your question, Kenneth? I have three questions. First, whatever happened in Benghazi? Second, why would you run for president after your husband shamed the office? And third, whatever happened to all those things you took when you left the White House? Well, just then the bell rings for recess. Hillary informs the kiddies that they will continue after recess. When they resume, Hillary says, okay, where were we? Oh, that's right, question time. Who has a question? Different little boy puts his hand up. Hillary points him out and asks him what his name is. Larry. And what is your question, Larry? I have five questions. First, whatever happened in Benghazi? Second, why would you run for president after your husband shamed the office? Third, whatever happened to all those things you took when you left the White House? Fourth, why did the recess bell go off 20 minutes early? Oh, and fifth, what happened to Kenneth? Just a little joke on the savage. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Now, why are such jokes circulating on the Internet? Because she's the most trusted woman in the history of, uh, I don't know, of what? Bulgaria? She's the most trusted woman in the history of the Ukraine. Iran devils get their deal, says the Daily News. The die is cast, they write, President, oh, shameful, will ram his Iranian nuclear deal through Congress despite majority opposition in both the House and Senate. Now what? No, I'll now worry, worry, worry a lot, they write. Although the fight is lost, the Senate owes the people an up or down vote on one of the most consequential foreign policy agreements in decades. Obama says he has boxed the Iranians so tightly that they have no chance of expanding a greatly reduced nuclear program in the short run, and that he or a future president could snap back economic sanctions should the Iranians go rogue. Thus, he argues, America will be better positioned to curb Iran for the 15-year life of the pact. They write that his positions are based on faith and hope, two virtues that are misplaced when risking utter catastrophe, quite probably triggering an arms race in the Middle East, and leaving Israel under the shadow of a mushroom cloud. At the same time, the terror-exporting radical Islamist regime in Iran will gain economic strength, becoming still more capable of waging not-so-covert warfare in the Middle East. I can pause right there because it's the, the, the limit of your attention span. The article is quite much longer, but I know the attention span of a, of a, of a pigeon is the average attention span of a radio listener, especially days before Labor Day weekend, when we have so many more important things to do. Car rides, barbecues. I don't know what else we're going to do. I'm, I'm going away. I'm going somewhere. I don't want to sit here and cook a hot dog by myself on a barbecue grill, just me and the dog. <laughs> you know, i, I got to tell you something. I don't have a webcam in my studio. I swear to you, if I had a webcam, it would be the most sought-after... YouTube or whatever they call it. My dog, Teddy, is asleep underneath my broadcast desk in this studio with his butt up against all the wires. Now, I know it's dangerous. Don't call the ASPCA. I love the dog more than you can imagine. But I did wonder before the show if there's any chance of a fire being started in his behind. And I also wondered why does he butt up against all those wires? I mean, I don't understand that. There's some security in knowing that he's... Oh, I know why. Since he nips the heels, actually the toes of any engineer who dares come into my studio to adjust and repair things, I guess he feels this way he's guarding the wires from some nasty engineer who may come in the studio. But you know, it would make for a heck of a, of a, a, a webcast. Instead of looking down at a bald head of a cigar-smoking broadcaster, you could look down at the furry creature on my wires. 855-407-282. The fact is that Obama is... A liar. He's a serial liar. He has lied to U.S. citizens without apology. He has stepped on the Constitution. 
He has destroyed race relations. He has attacked Republicans, telling Hispanics to punish them. He has abandoned our allies. He has appeased tyrants. He is coddling adversaries. He is using the Crusades as an excuse for inaction as Islamist terrorists slaughter their way and rape their way across the Middle East. And now Obama has finally put the knife in our only real ally and the sole representative of Western civilization in the Middle East, a little nation called Israel. Just look at how he has sat on his hands while ISIS has been taking over the Middle East. Look how he's thrown away all of the dead boys who died in Iraq and Afghanistan, all the gains thrown in the toilet. Look how he has crippled our military. Look how he has crippled our foreign policy. Look how he has weakened our economy by printing money. You think the economy is doing well? Are you sure? Your health insurance will be up hundreds of dollars a month. Hundreds of dollars a month. Yes, indeed. I guess Obama will soon socialize car insurance and tell you that it's car care coming next. Everything he touches goes up in smoke. When will he understand what he is doing to us? Well, he knows very well what he's doing to us. The question is, why is America asleep? Why? Why are Islamist extremists being coddled? Why is Islam being imported into the United States? Why? Because he promised to fundamentally transform America. And he is in the process of altering not only America, but the entire planet to his perverse vision of rule by a Stone Age totalitarian theocracy. As I said, if I were a psychiatrist, I would tell you that this diagnosis is critical. He is a psychopath by any definition. But since most Americans don't know the difference between psychopathology and their own pathologies, there's no point in talking about it. Who profits from the Iran deal? Who are the corporate winners from the nuclear agreement? I actually have their names. And you'll be quite surprised to learn the names. If you care to join the conversation, the phone number is 855 400 And by the way, this is uh, the Savage Nation. If you don't know what you're listening to, if you heard it for the first time, it won't be the last, I guarantee you. I'm expecting a guest in the next hour on a subject that's dear to most people in America, which is antidepressant medication. He is a world-leading neurologist and psychiatrist, and we might just have him on in the next hour to talk about the various antidepressant drugs, their benefits and dangers, right here, all you depressives on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I'm not going to repeat the topics that I introduced in the opening to the show because it exhausts me, and I'm sorry if you missed the opening of the class. You'll have to catch up later with the Savage Notes. But here's yet another fact that didn't make it to your paper. You know the massive number of refugees that are running out of Syria because of the civil war. Main, many of them are Muslims, by the way, trying to flood into Europe to change uh, Europe forever from a fundamentally Christian area to a Muslim area. That's under the surface what's going on, which is why Hungary, to their credit, has blocked railway lines and is refusing to let them in. Even for humanitarian reasons, they say we're not going to let our nation be overrun by Muslims, period, end of story. You haven't heard any of that in America, have you? Well, here's another little story. Russia gearing up to be the first world power to insert ground forces into Syria. Russian airborne troops are ready to be dropped into Syria. Did you hear what I just said to you? Despite strong denials from Moscow, Russian airborne troops are preparing to land in Syria, to fight ISIL or ISIS. The surprise attack this last Monday by ISIS forces on a district of southern Damascus in which they conquered parts of the district and brought ISIS forces close to the Syrian capital, capital is expected to accelerate the Russian military intervention. They're not going to let Assad fall no matter what Obama does to facilitate his fall.